Welcome back, Indiana Sports Beat Radio coming to you here on this Monday, brought to you by the great folks at Southern Stone Restaurant, home of the Tom Allen Show each and every Wednesday night, hosted by Don Fisher, who's with us right now. Don, how are you, sir? Good morning, guys. I'm doing fine. Tired, but doing fine. Yeah, surviving uh, these back-to-back Saturday night, 8 o'clock games that we were talking about in the break. I, I was lamenting it myself. I'm like, dude, getting home at 1.30 in the morning, uh, and then you've got to drive a little further drive on top of that. Uh, it wears – it takes two or three days to recover from that for me, So I and, and I can imagine for you as well. Uh, it's Those are not fun. No, they're not. I mean, they're they're fun to do the game. It's not fun to do a five and a half hour broadcast, <laughs> and four hours plus of that is on the air doing play by play. Which, you know, that's the crazy part of this thing right now. Um, these games are just taking so long. Um, I, I watched the Colts game yesterday. They played in overtime, and they were done in three hours and forty five minutes. I mean. <laughs> Yep. You're sitting there going, why Why can't they do that in college? Well, I'll tell you one reason why, because they stop the clock after every first down and move the chains and all that. Well, they don't do that in the NFL. Uh, so there's a big factor right there um, with all the first downs that are picked up in, in pro football games and, and college football games, that kind of thing. They, they've got to find a way to shorten these things because the fans, I mean, I understand that, uh, you know, God bless the fans who came to the ball game on Saturday with the rainstorm that we had and how difficult it was to be sitting up there. The student body, of course, was having a ball that did show up, uh, but only half of them showed up on Saturday night. But at the same time, it was a deluge. And, of course, the 30-minute start time delay and all that kind of thing all played into it as well. But these games are going well over four hours, and there's just no excuse for that. And, of course, television commercials now are – three minutes long, just about in almost every case, all of these things play into it. They got to find a way to to change this or they're going to lose just people just because they don't want to sit there and watch it for five hours. And and Don, before we jump, jump, before we jump into the IU game, it's funny. I was at the Florida Kentucky game this past weekend and my brother and I were having this exact conversation. There was a four play stretch where one player got injured uh, I think actually two players got injured and ESPN, they got off the field. I think it was cramping, but they got off the field relatively quickly. And ESPN still took a three and a half minute television timeout. And another thing that I think the NFL does really well done is they do those play the, the commercials in the game. So you can air a 30 second commercial during, right. you know, when, when things are moving on. So um, I agree with you. We sat there for four and a half hours. Most of the NFL games were done in, in three hours and 15 minutes to three hours and 45 minutes. And those were exciting down to the wire type of games. Right. Um, I completely agree with you. They've got to figure something out because uh, sitting in the stands for four and a half hours with somebody's knees in your back. I mean, that, that'll take a toll on any fan. Well, no, that's a good NFL game. It goes to overtime, not just overtime, but completes the overtime yeah. because it ends in a tie and it still ends in quicker fashion, that's a problem. Right, exactly. Uh, no question about that. The good news is I sit in a broadcast booth and nobody's knees are in my back, so <laughs> I'm, I'm in good shape there. There you go. Uh, thank, yeah, thank good Jake, The your technical producer, sits up high. You don't have to worry about that. Right, exactly. Uh, it, it, and Indiana does come away with a win. Uh, a little bit more difficult than they expected. A, a difference of halves. That first half, we were like, okay. And, oh, and quickly, though, Don, I will I'll tell you before I came on, I'm not a big better, but I like to just play on the weekends. But, and I always bet uh, parlays, three-team parlays, little $50 ones. Wisconsin mm-hmm. cost me a $2,500 payout <laughs> this weekend. Wisconsin, because they are in both of my parlays. Because they were playing the team that Indiana that Indiana's opponent played last week. And I'm like, there's no way that this can be – that Idaho can be that good. This team put – Indiana put 56 on them last year. I'm like, you can't get that much better. Uh, Western State can't be that good. They were a 17-point underdog to Wisconsin. They go to, to Wisconsin, beat Wisconsin, and Idaho showed the first half against Indiana. They made tough things – life hell and i think that they were just a little bit better than than we gave them credit for 
and and I sort of I sort of paid for it literally. Well, I, I I understand I understand your your frustration with that. Um, I don't bet, so I didn't lose any money. Uh, that's a good news for me. Uh, not so much for you. I, I well, you did, I mean, betting is you know, I mean, everybody does it. Uh, I shouldn't say everybody, but a lot of people do it, and and I have no problem with it. My biggest issue on Saturday was the fact that Indiana played so poorly and did not take advantage of opportunities in the first half that were literally put on a plate for them, served up on a plate, and they dumped the plate uh, before they could ever get anything done with it. And it really bothered me dramatically. They could not take advantage of the field position that they were given on three different occasions in this football game. And they were down 10 nothing at halftime because of it. Uh, Connor Bazelak was pathetic in the first half. I, I don't know how else to state it. I mean, he couldn't find a way to get the ball to anybody, not only on time, but he couldn't get it close to him in a lot of those cases. It was just a poor performance on his on his behalf, and he struggled immensely. Now, whether it was the wet ball um, uh, and, and the conditions and all those kinds of things, Connor played two years in the SEC. He was the freshman of the year in the SEC as a quarterback, He's got the experience to deal with those kinds of things. And obviously, he just uh, wet the bed, so to speak. Uh, he just really struggled. But then, of course, in the second half, he got it going. Uh, then he was tremendous, 10 of 12. But he also had some receivers that made, DJ especially, who made two terrific catches on their first drive of the second half that got their first touchdown. Those two catches that DJ Matthews had were spectacular one was, you know, diving out of bounds to make the catch. The other, a one-handed grab that he pulled in and set up the touchdown run by Donovan McCulley down to the four-yard line. So uh, I maybe maybe that had something to do with Connor saying, you know, I, this was I got to do something myself besides everybody else getting the job done. Whatever the case, uh, they found a way to turn it on in the second half. They scored 35 unanswered points. Uh, but gave up two touchdowns defensively late in the ball game that probably just destroyed Tom Allen's belief that this was a good win for Indiana because he wasn't pleased when we got him on the post game show. He was really upset uh, with his football team, and it was you know because of the struggles they had offensively with Connor, uh, but at the same time the defense giving up two scores late in the ball game when the game was really out of reach for for Idaho. Well, that's when you've got to just put your foot on their neck and say no more. So they didn't get that done. So there, there were so many different things you could point to in this game that were negatives, but the most important thing was they won the football game and they're 2-0. When, when I look at a, a, the disparity in the first half and the second half, um, I, I do think Idaho was better than probably we gave them credit for, but at the same time, I wonder – if this team came out and just thought we were going to roll the helmets out and it was going to be the same result as last year, because uh, it's tough to go from zero points to 35 points and to see the difference in play. And I know you said they gave up those two touchdowns. Tom Allen obviously wasn't happy, but it, it looked like a completely different team in the second half. I mean, do you, do you think that there was a little bit of, they read a little too much of the headlines. We won a big, big 10 game last week. We're supposed to roll our helmets out and just take care of business like we did last year. And, and maybe that's why the, the team struggled in the first 30 minutes. I, you know, I'd like to think that that might have been part of the problem. I don't know if it really was because Tom Allen all week long, he was, trust me, he had no <laughs> voice left going into this ball game. We did our pregame show with him on, on Saturday morning or Saturday uh, late in the day, obviously. But uh, when they got to the uh, stadium on Saturday, his voice was shot then. So this guy was talking all week long about this is a different Idaho team you guys are going to be facing this week. You cannot take them lightly. And Washington State's a good football team, as they proved Saturday with the win over Wisconsin. So there's no question that Idaho was, was a better team than they were a year ago under a new head coach, a new system. Uh, they had a lot of transfer portal people that came in that helped them, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Um it, all the all the signs were there that this was not going to be the same Idaho team that Indiana played a year ago. And Allen preached it all week long. The coaches preached it all all week long. I don't know how you could possibly be sitting there and going, hey, we're going to roll over these guys just like we did a year ago. But right. sometimes that's the way players think, I guess. And, and it's unfortunate 
those of us who are older, who have been around the block a few times, realize you can't take anybody lightly anymore. There's simply nobody that can't beat you if you don't get out there and are ready to play. And unfortunately, no. if you're Ohio State, maybe that can happen. But in Indiana, it can't. Well, ask Jimbo Fisher about that. Ask uh, ask Notre Dame yeah. about that. Uh, ask some Paul Chris. Sizable, sizable. Exactly. sizable. Uh, yeah, ask. Oh, don't 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 remind me of Paul Chris. He's not on my <laughs> he's not on my Christmas list right now. I um, understand, man. Uh, but yeah, but a fun. So fun. It's been fun. Indiana off to a two and zero start is the best part. Now they can put their focuses towards the next week and hopefully know that no matter who their opponent is. They better have their heads in their helmets, I, I guess, uh, not in, in other places, but it needs to be in their helmet thinking because, man, and, and it's not just Indiana, like we said. We saw Florida State, how they have, you know, we had the stuff at the beginning of the season between him and, 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 and Nick Saban, but Florida State, I know, has a $25 million NIL Texas A&M. bankroll, or Texas A&M, rather, a $25 million uh, NIL bankroll set up so they're one of the biggest programs up there with alabama and lately was at home that is not but that shows you where we are with college football and i love it in a in a degree but indiana can be one of those spoilers if they if they get their heads together they've got another game to uh uh i, I get i guess you'd say to start to get things together before they head into a, a, the more difficult portion of the season, traveling to Cincinnati. But uh, another game coming up this week where uh, they need to continue to get – they're looking like a second-half offensive team, and I don't think that's by design, Don. No, it's not. And, and here's the thing. Western Kentucky is a really good football program, and they proved it a year ago. Indiana struggled mightily in that game in Bowling Green and won it 33-31. to 31. This team is probably as good, if not better, than it was a year ago because they the transfer guys that they brought in last year that did not leave after last season are still there. That's helped them. They've got a couple of wide receivers that are spectacular. They've got a new quarterback who has looked just as good or better than the guy that they had a year ago, who was a terrific quarterback. They, this coach has done a tremendous job with this program. Nine and four, I think nine and four is first year, five and segment seven in the COVID year. And then he came back with a nine and five season last year. They had the most dynamic offense in the country a year ago. And it looks like they're back to playing that kind of offense again. This is going to be a challenge for Indiana football this week. Anybody that doesn't believe that has no clue about what college football is all about right now. Oh, now, one of the one thing I do want to mention uh, real quick, Dustin, though, Sean Shivers, yep. big change for Indiana there. Uh, the running game was non-existent uh, in, in week one and, and in the first half, really. But uh, 183 yards uh, on, I don't know, is that for the season or is that for the, this past game? He had 155. Well, for the okay, game. so yeah. look, yeah. he's got 183 for the season, and 155 came in the last game. That right. tells you the difference right there. But 155 yards rushing, uh, that has to make uh, Indiana fans feel a little bit better. Well, there's no question that there were some holes to run through this week. There weren't any in week one, without question. And that means the offensive line made some changes. Uh, they are playing a lesser team as well, as we know. Uh, from a defensive perspective, I, I still think Idaho's defense was their strength. Uh, they were a good defensive football team, and um, Indiana was able to run the football against them. Shivers obviously got loose for two or three big runs in the ball game. Uh, he's a talented back if he gets the opportunity to show that, uh, and that's going to be critical in this matchup with Western Kentucky. I, I don't know a lot about their defense because they gave up a lot of points to Austin P, but then they shut down a very good or a, a Hawaii team that's expected to be pretty decent in that regard uh, in game two. So we're just going to have to wait and see how this all plays out. But my gut feeling is that if Indiana goes into it ready to play and not taking anybody lightly or those kinds of things, they will win this football game. But it's going to be a challenge. It's not going to be an easy win. 
Indiana's going to have the defense is going to have to play much better than they have in the first two games with all the missed tackles that they've had. Uh, and you can't give up late scores to a football team like Western Kentucky. You're going to get beat. 